Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel where we talk about stuff. Uh, this is going to be a bit of a different video. Uh, it's in response to a lot of things that I've been seeing. At first, I believed it was just the algorithm showing me a lot of things, but then I started getting information from a lot of other friends that they're also getting the exact same thing. And I'm not sure if it's just happenstance, even you finding this video. Uh, but it's something that I think that we actually need to talk about. Um, let me just say beforehand, this is also going to be a video uh, for people who can and who can actually uh, put the time into this. I know that a lot of people are already stretched very thin. I know the stress that's out there, and it's more of a, when you have the time to actually do this, then I implore you to please go ahead with it, but it's understandable if this is actually uh, too much to ask of you or anyone, especially at this time when the last four or five years have been quite uh, hectic, um, if I can say it that way. So um, I've always lived in a world where... The idea of retirement was never really a thing until I was in like my early 20s and I had a very good friend, we're still friends, who kind of taught me to like get it together, uh, put my money where my mouth was, so to say, uh, just kind of hunker down and really like invest, if you will. And it actually allowed me to uh, not have to work by the time I was around 30 or so. Um, and this included a whole bunch of other stuff, which we're not going to really get into the, the, okay. Like I said, it's going to be a very different video. So please stick with me. The problem is that right now, um, I made sure that I would not, uh, get into debt and debt is one of the main things right now. That's actually causing a lot of people, uh, to feel this like stress that's around them. The idea of, Going to school, going to high school, going to university, going to college, uh, finding a job, sticking with it, and then retiring was always something that we were all told. We were I, I've seen a couple of videos saying that uh, boomers made us this way or this is the reason why things aren't as perfect as they could be because we were all sold the idea that you do one, two, three, four, and then five happens, you retire, you're happy, you're living on a beach somewhere. We've seen all of the uh, videos of people living on resorts in Florida and things like that. The problem is, is that we as a society at large were never taught about debt. Um, I didn't have, and, and I remember this, I didn't have a proper, a proper economics course until my last year in high school. And even then, I remember uh, asking the teacher multiple questions and it was almost like I was asking like, can I float on the moon? And he just didn't give me like a proper answer. I'm not sure if he himself didn't know it or if maybe it was too far outside the lines of what the learning curriculum was for that time period. Um, I remember another really weird thing is I remember um, I turned 18 and I remember I walked into an old Navy with my grandmother. We were going shopping and I went this way and she went this way, like walking through the store. And this woman came up to me with like a piece of paper and before she could completely get the words out and I could put together what she was saying, she was asking if I wanted a, an, an Old Navy credit card. I'm hearing the words she's saying and my grandmother comes out of nowhere like a bat out of hell and tells the woman, no, 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 thank you, thank you, and kind of pushes the woman completely away. And basically, my grandmother told me as we're walking through the store, she's like, don't get a credit card ever. Like, they're terrible. Like, you don't want one. You don't want to be in this level of debt. I've been seeing a lot of documentaries about um, people who are in debt, who did not know how not to get into debt, especially at the age of 18. A lot of people who were told, and even now, I see a lot of other YouTubers. This isn't me knocking them. This isn't me saying that they're not awesome, cool, intelligent, amazing, wonderful. But it's a really weird thing when other uh, financial YouTubers are telling people uh, to get into debt. Now, this idea of like good debt and bad debt to me has always seemed a little weird. The idea of you being okay with the idea of being in debt for 30 years, monthly, continuous. Like, imagine your age right now. Now, put 30 years onto that 
and you're supposed to be okay with getting in debt for anything on any level, it basically, it makes you a lifelong customer of the bank. And I don't know, well, rather, I know exactly how we got to this point. It's kind of all structured by society and by the people who are the winners who are at the very top of the pyramid. They want you to always have to find a way to be in debt. And this is why you're constantly seeing, you're, you must be, you must be, you must be. Seeing so many things that PayPal is now, pa PayPal is now offering, like payment plans on stuff. Don't you want this really awesome, expensive thing? Well, just pay us back for the next two years. It gets you comfortable with the idea of, well, I mean, if I, if I only have to pay like 79 a month to get that thing, well, I guess it's not that bad. But before you know it, you have five, six, seven other things that are also being monthly payments on top of the other monthly subscriptions that you also have. Debt is probably one of the craziest things that I think we're going to have to deal with as a society, even when you think about the United States and many other countries being trillions of dollars into debt. You hear trillions and you go, well, at least it's not me, not realizing that you actually are a portion of that trillion. Like, if you've ever seen the debt clock, you own a portion of that tr multi, 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 multi trillion dollar debt. But we, even when it comes to actual personal debt, this is what I was saying before. Like I said, it's going to be a very different video. If you can find a way to not get into debt and or pay off your debt, you're kind of going to be completely scot-free and you should remain that way for as long if not forever if you can simply because it's one of the most dangerous things ever it is it is by design that we as a society now are trying to save more the problem with saving more is that you don't contribute to the gdp if you don't contribute to the gdp if you're not contributing to the money that's flowing through the economy then you become essentially more worthless to the economy. You are supposed to find a job and work there for 40 something years. You're supposed to get into multiple forms of debt so that you can continue keeping the banking system running. And this is why essentially we have Bitcoin. It's meant to be a system that where there is no debt, there is no debt accrued. You simply have what you have. I have my crypto. It's on the blockchain. I can show you for a fact. None of it is in the form of debt. You are meant to ride this train for as long as possible until you reproduce, you have kids, and they also have a lack of knowledge about finance, and then they repeat the entire cycle. It's not tinfoil hat. It's not a conspiracy. It is literally just the way that things are and have really always been for a very long time. And this is why you see such a huge dramatic difference in the way that you learn in public school or even in private school that's also set up by design where people in public school are meant to be the actual workers forever and people who are in private schools are by design also meant to receive a different type of education that actually also informs them to be the ceos and the higher workers it's all woven into the fabric of society getting slightly off um topic um one of the first now understand that Retiring early is not hmm. We've been we've been given the illusion, and I've noticed it even more in the last couple of years. We've been given the illusion that retirement is something that's never ever going to happen. And I've seen a lot of for, for those of you who don't know, I watch an enormous amount of documentaries. I've seen so many documentaries over the last couple of years, even the last I want to say half a year where they do these like street interviews and they walk up to people and they ask them, how old are you? Where do you live? Yada, yada. How much do you make? And they ask these people, do you think that you're ever going to retire? And the resounding answer is always a no. It's never going to happen. So they ask a lot of uh, them, which is even crazier. Well, if you're not going to retire, what do you plan on doing? Like, What do you so-and-so? And it's always a mix between the answers. It's either I'm going to work until the end. I'm going to work until my 90s. And a lot of them say, I'm going to live my best life. This is the largest lie, and this is going to get the most people in trouble. Even mathematically, a lot of people who are watching this right now, it's not being mean. Mathematically, only probably around 20% of you are going to take this advice and actually end up doing something with it. It's just the way that things are. We have so many other things happening in our lives, and even if I tell you not to go and buy these shiny brand new things, you're going to hear it. And it's going to kind of disappear over the course of the next couple of days because you will see shiny brand new things. And it's not that you lack discipline. It's just that everything around us is set up so that we only see advertisements to buy things that we don't need that further get us into debt and stop us from actually being able to retire. 
this is something similar also to like the FIRE movement, uh, financial independence, retire early. You've, you've heard about it. It takes such a strong amount of willpower. That's what I said at the beginning of the video. It's, this is for people who have the time and the patience and the energy to be able to do this. It's not going to be for everyone because that's not how math works. Mathematically, it won't be all of you. But a huge portion of you are going to hear this and you're going to understand that like now is the time. Now is, yet you have to get in line and you have to really understand that you are able to actually do this. When you hear the, 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 the testimonials, if you will, from these people who are talking about that they plan on living their best life, it's mainly from, I want to say Gen Z, not really Gen Alpha, and like a big portion of millennials. Their main uh, problem is that they say that they will never own a home. Well, I'm never going to be able to buy a home, so who cares? You've been thrown the illusion that the only way to be happy is by buying property. The only way to have made it is to have a house, three bedrooms, to have this, to have four cars. It's because you've been lied to through advertising. It is not the only way for you to be happy. There are tons of people who have made their millions not owning property, not having a property portfolio. They put it into stocks. They put it into dividend stocks. There are multiple other ways for you to actively have an income, for you to actively make money, and for you to be able to retire early. We're not going to even talk about simply moving, going somewhere else, going to a different safe other country where the cost of living is like one twentieth of where you currently are. If you're in the States, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You're usually told like, what are you talking about going to somewhere else? You know how many other beautiful places? If you get a chance, look up uh, the cost of living in Bali. You can find tons of YouTube videos on it. It is going to blow your mind. You literally have no idea what it's like. When you hear these people saying, I'm never going to own a home, they say, well, what do you do with your money? I go on vacations multiple times. I buy new shoes. I buy new bags. I'm always buying new clothes. Me and my friends are eating out all the time. The idea is that at the, if the, at the end of the month, you have an extra two, three, four, five hundred. Well, that four or five hundred, that's going to take a long time to become a house. I might as well just sell it right now. You are given the idea that, well, all hope is lost. You won't have the American dream because there's only one dream, right? There's only one thing you can do. And therefore, these videos are crazy because I see them being put out by, sorry for screaming. I see them being put out by other people and I sit there and I'm like, you know, the, the message that you're giving isn't one of hope. You're telling these people that, well, all hope is lost. If all the young people are doing it, what are you supposed to do? The, the issue is also really bad in China and in Singapore, basically kind of all over the world. But a lot of Asian countries also have this problem as well where their real estate costs are astronomical, especially in Singapore, especially in Hong Kong. And they were talking to all these young people and all they had the exact same answer. Well, I, well, I buy luxury goods. Well, I buy Louis Vuitton. And I had just finished watching something where they were talking about how luxury brands – in 2018, 2019, they were doing okay. They weren't doing astronomically well. The moment 2020 and 2021 happened, you remember, the, these companies, their valuation skyrocketed because everyone for some reason lived under this illusion that, you know, it's, you know, I, I don't want to be sad, so let me spend all of my money. And this is why you saw these record profits from all these companies. But the problem is, is that someone has spread the message, well, you can't buy, a, you're never going to be able to buy a home, especially not in the big city, not, not, not even thinking of just going to the actual suburbs to be able to like, you know, live a better life. It's okay that you have to travel into the big city while you can actually have a home and a future somewhere else. You don't have to live in the same exact spot where you've been your entire life. They, they, they spend all their money. They were talking to people, most of them making 2500 maybe 3000 a month from their jobs, young people. And they were all like, well, usually around every single month, I like buy around like seven dollars $8,000 worth of stuff. And they were going through all the numbers and they were like, well, I pay my rent, I pay for my food, I pay for my so-and-so. And then all the other 7000 is on a credit card. And they were like, what are you talking about? They're like, well, I have to buy new things all the time. And they're like, why are you buying all these things? They said, well, because I want to live. If, if I'm not going to be happy when I'm older, I have to live right now. Who told you that you're not going to be happy when you're older? Who told you that because you can't buy a house in Singapore or in Hong Kong or in New York or in Miami or in Vancouver that the next 30, 40 years of your life have to be absolutely miserable and you have to get yourself into debt just to make sure that you feel something? 
Pay attention to these videos. You're going to start seeing them a lot more. What, what's that other company? There's another company who's also uh, offering this like buy now, pay later kind of thing. It's all part of the scam. This is why these companies and these banks are pulling record profits because they're collectively telling everyone you should just give up. You shouldn't really actually worry anymore. You know, all you should do now is just live your best life. And the thing that really clicked, that clicked so hard was... I made a video on this as well. This was 2021, 2020, 2021, somewhere around that time period when the entire uh, Wall Street bets uh, GameStop thing was going on. I'll never forget. And someone someone found the, the video before years ago. Thank you very much for like reposting it on my Twitter. If I find it again, I'll also repost it as well, where it was this guy from uh, Wall Street. He was on CNBC and they were asking him what he thought about the entire Wall Street bets thing. And the issue is, was, is that... These the normal people had figured out how to long stocks when they saw that a company was shorting it. This is this is normally not supposed to be public knowledge. The public knowing what a short and a long is is not supposed to be a thing. So there were all these stories of these people who were making fifty thousand dollars from GameStop, who were making all this money, and these people were like, "I can finally get something for my dog. I can finally do something for my family. I can finally do so and so and so. I finally have money to pay off my debt to put away." This guy from Wall Street was like, "I don't, I don't think this is good, man. I don't, I don't think normal people should be in the market. It's just." It's just not the market that we're supposed to have. He's talking so, 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 so bluntly, so, so, so nonchalantly as if he's not saying the craziest thing in the entire world. And then he ended it off with something like, you know, I think, I think these guys just got to get back out there, find a girlfriend and, and, and just stop it, man. And I was like, of, of course, this is part of it. You, you don't want normal people to actually make money. This also goes into a whole another discussion as to why uh, inflation is completely out of control. The stuff in your supermarkets c continues to get more expensive, why your rent continues to go up. You're meant to be crunched. You're meant to not have any extra money. And they know it. This is part of the entire system. Anyway, when it goes to the idea of debt and getting in debt, avoid it at all costs. If you are able to begin to rather know. I know that you are able to begin to pay off your debts. This brings me to the next topic, and they fit perfectly together. You have to figure out a way to reduce your cost of living, like right now. Like this is, this is not a joke. This is not something to do down the line. You have to become more knowledgeable on what you're spending, what it's being spent on, and how much money you're actually bringing in every single month so that you can get it together. I've seen and I and I've spoken to a lot of people, friends, if you will, who tell me things along the lines of, well, I have a two bedroom apartment right now and I, and I kind of want to keep it that way. I want to have one bedroom for myself and I want to have a guest bedroom. When you're having guests, well, whenever a guest actually ends up coming over. You're one person. Having grown up in the States, I know what it's like to always want to be seen in some sort of status, to always not want to tell people that you live in a studio apartment, to not tell people that you take public transportation. What? I remember growing up, there were so many people who used to get, I, I saw people making fun of other people on buses who were taking buses for being on the bus, calling them broke, calling them all these other crazy names that I definitely cannot say on, on YouTube. We live in this world, and this is everywhere now. This isn't just in the States, but if you, if you live in the States, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You live in this world where you're afraid to not keep up with the Joneses. The moment you make more money, you show other people that you made more money. And you even go farther. You even make sure sometimes that you are in debt just to really show them exactly how much you've made it. The problem is, is that from the outside looking in, you can't really tell. So if somebody that you've known for a while, a friend or family member or anyone else, you see them live in large, you see they have a new car. Didn't he just get a new job? Where'd he get that so-and-so from? Did you see the thing he was wearing? That's crazy. The assumption is that, well, my gosh, he made it. This new job, he must be bringing in a million dollars per year. He's probably bringing in like 60,000. But there's a disconnect. Because you have to make sure that you show other people exactly how rich you look, how much you have it, when you are drowning in debt. Instead of living a simple life, you find, you've seen the YouTube, you've seen these YouTube videos. I just moved to New York. It's, it's, my, it's my first time here. Let's go apartment hunting. 
oh, this is a three-bedroom. I mean, I'm by myself, but I guess I could have it. These people are in debt. These people are terribly, horribly, atrociously in debt, and they can't admit it to you. They will never be able to tell you how deep that they're in debt because that's the image that they're trying to show you. There's a lot of people who fake it until they make it. There are a lot of uh, financial YouTubers who've also uh, done that as well. Also done that as well. That's also a really big topic that maybe we'll cover some other day. I know it's scary, and I know it's something that a lot of you don't want to do. You're going to have to, whether, whether it be now or in a couple of years when you're really in trouble, you're going to have to sit down. And I am old school in that I, I don't care for everything digital in a certain way. I write everything down on a, on a, uh, with a pen and paper just so I can visually see it a lot better. And also I've written it out with my hands so like that muscle memory knows, okay, got to get things under control. You have to write out how much you're earning per month. How much you're spending per month. What you're spending your money on. That's that's that, that's going to be the kicker. Because you sit there and you think that you kind of have everything under control and you realize there's about 18 other things that you don't need that you're doing all the time. That includes uh, ordering out, getting takeaway. Uh, that includes you going out with your friends all the time. I understand that you're in your 20s and you think that by the time you hit 30, your knees are going to stop working and your arms going to you're going to have a lot of back pain. No, your, your 30s will you'll be just fine. Same as in your 40s. As long as you exercise, you'll be you'll be nice and fit. You, you don't need to party all the time right now. You'll be able to also do it later on when you have more money. You don't need to go out every weekend. You don't need to have other extracurricular activities that involve also spending money at uh, clubs on on weekends. I had a friend. Uh, she we're, we're still friends. Uh, I'll never forget. Uh, at some point, she got kicked out of her uh, her flat where she was living, and she was like, "I don't understand." She's like, I, but, what, blah, 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 blah. "Told me all these things," and I remember looking at her. I was like, "Every time I saw you, you were spending around a good three hundred between Friday and Saturday." During the week, you were also doing other activities that also amounted to around two, three hundred. Over the course of years, from the stuff that I saw, that's all money that definitely could have been saved. Don't forget, you can have friends over to your house. You can have like quiet evenings. I'm not telling you how to live your life, but understand that you're going to have to get this under control at some point if you want to stop working early. There's literally no other way. You don't, and I say this in the nicest way possible. If you have three pairs of shoes that aren't falling apart, you don't need new shoes. If you have more than 10 shirts, 10 t-shirts, 10 button-down shirts, 10 sweaters, 10 pullovers, 10 hoodies, you don't need a new one. You know you don't need a new one. You don't need new pants. You don't need new jeans. Stop following the TikTok trends. Stop buying other stuff because you saw your friend buy it. I know it's so difficult because I'm sitting here thinking about it as well when I was younger. And I remember by the time I got old enough to have like not my own money, I was working in the library of my school. And I remember getting like the little paycheck that we used to get and being like, wow, how much money I have. And I would go and see other friends and they had new clothes. And I was like, well, I also have I have to I have to have new clothes when I would go on family vacations. Listen, America's crazy. I remember having family vacations and we always, like, the idea was to always have new clothes every single day when you were traveling because it would show people in your photos that you had made it. Look at them traveling. They have new clothes every single day. You go eat out all the time. It's all these different things that you have where you keep these habits as an adult and they're incredibly toxic for your wallet. If you ever get a chance, there's a, I mean, this is very, like, very niche. There's a TV show called Extreme, Extreme Cheapskates. And there's, there's uh, videos uploaded as well onto YouTube. And there's one video in particular of this girl who, like, she's a cheapskate, but she does it because she grew up poor. And she's like, I want to save all of my money. I want to have my money. So, like, it's like a form of trauma kind of. And at some point, it's her grandmother and her sister are screaming at her. They're like, spend your money. Be happy. Spend your money like us and just be happy. These people are broke, by the way. Not, I don't know her or her family. I'm going by what I saw on the TV show. Broke. And this girl's trying so hard to save her money so that she has something when she gets older. She didn't mention retiring early, but it was 
But it was simply like, I want to have something. I don't want to be like you guys. And they're so angry with her because they've also been taught this terrible lie that you need to spend all of your money by the end of the month. You don't have anything. Your bank account zero and you're in debt. Well, look at all this. Look at all the bags. Look at all the stuff that you bought. Look how happy you are. Look at, look at how many items you bought that are keeping these rich people as rich as humanly possible. See the record profits that they made? You did that. You and your friends, you made them happier. It's nuts. It's completely insane. You wouldn't believe the amount of times I'm a very diligent saver. I mean like almost to like a fault where like I save so much of the money that I make and I push everything into investments that sometimes I also kind of forget to go out and like have fun or do things that would make me happy. But it's because I see constantly these documentaries and people who I know, if, you're, if, if anyone I know is watching this video, hello, I, I can help you. Believe me, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to help you all the time. I have a lot of friends. I've tried to help them invest and put money away and no one listens to me. I have like three friends over the last like seven years who've actually listened and they're doing well. They're doing extremely well. And I, and I understand this like thing that we were taught to have to make sure that we look like we have it. No, you got to, you got to stop. <laughs> look through your finances diligently. It's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. It's going to hurt because I've been there before. You have to sit down, look at all the numbers because it helps you to really frame exactly what can be deleted? What can be cut? Because you sit there sometimes, and you're like, I need a new TV. You just bought this TV two years ago. You don't need a new TV. I understand that. While a PS5 sounds fantastic, you don't need a PS5. You have other games that you have before. You're probably using Steam. You're probably using Epic. There's a whole bunch of other free games that you have and also video games that you haven't played in a long time. You can also play those. You don't need new shoes. You don't need a new car, especially if you have one or two. I just saw this other video. It was absolute nonsense. This girl was talking about... <laughs> it, was a, it, was a, it was a video literally about uh, wanting to retire early and how like normal people can't do it. And in the video, this girl, she was 24, still living with her parents. There's no shame in that. Don't be ashamed. You're not supposed to move up by the time you're 18 and have everything together. That's not how the world works. Still living with her parents. And she was like, yeah, I've been saving up all this money so I can get my own place. And they were like, well, are you, are you, are you halfway there? She's like, no, I just bought a new car. It was $22,000. <laughs> she lived in a small village town kind of thing. And instead of like taking the bus because it was really uncomfortable, she didn't want to have to wait 15 minutes for the bus that came periodically. She bought a car so that she could also pick up her friends as well who weren't giving her gas money to go to these areas and stuff as well so that they could go to the mall and that they could drive to work together. And I was like, bravo. I can't wait till you retire early. Like that's going to be absolutely phenomenal when you never are. 22,000? You know, you can get like a working proper used car. For like five, six, seven thousand, like a good car. And I'm not talking one with like a hundred thousand miles on it. I mean like a proper working good car. But the problem is, is these cars usually look like a little bit ugly. They don't have like the proper names that you want to show around your neighborhood because you're so busy trying to prove to other broke people that you're not broke. It's crazy. The world now is absolutely insane. You know how many people are never going to retire? You know how many people are never going to look through their finances and get their finances together? Shopping compulsions, always having to buy stuff, and they never want to get it under control because you're used to that dopamine. You're used to that feeling of, I just bought something new. I can't wait to walk through my area to show everyone what I have. Opening up your trunk, hoping, hoping that your neighbors are looking at you, saw you drive in in your brand new fancy car as you pull out 15 bags. Wow, he must be doing absolutely great. Isn't that completely incredible? You have to, and I mean... When you talk about reducing your cost of living, if you can do, hear me out here, if you can do an extra one to $200 per month only, you have no idea how far you are going to be compared to everyone else. Have you seen that thing where they talk to, uh, I'm sure you can Google it, where they talk to Americans and they ask them, if there was an emergency right now, if there was an emergency and you needed to find an extra $300, could you do it? And they all go, no. I think it's like more than 50% of Americans don't have $300 saved. 
Can you imagine for 500? Imagine if the emergency, because there's no, can we be honest? What emergency is only $300? I, I've seen like $800 emergencies. I've seen $1,500 emergencies because those are, that's why it's called an emergency. So what, what percentage does that then skyrocket to? Now imagine if you were able to put away, rather stop, I mean, and it goes as far as, here we go. I know people who have Amazon Prime, who have Disney Plus, who have Netflix, who have uh, the, the, the NBC one. They have like two horror streaming things. When I go over to their house, we sit there and we talk. We hang out, maybe watch some TV. It's none of those things. And I, and I often ask, like, how, how, much, how much are you spending on these things? And they'll tell me the number. And I'm like, how often do you watch it? There's not a lot of stuff on Netflix anymore. I mean, Amazon Prime is, is I, I don't, I, I, I you know, just don't care for it. And I'm like, why are you paying for it? Just in case something good comes on. You know that all adds up, right? You know the... Think about the stuff since the beginning of this year that you bought that you know you didn't need. And I mean, like, really think about it. How much did that add up to? How much could that have, how, how much of that could you have put away into something? If you can do an extra 200 per month, that's 2,400 by the end of the year. I always like to extrapolate. $24,000 in 10 years. Because people think that 10 years takes a long time. People sit there and they go, well, 10 years is a, is, a, is a mighty, mighty long time. Do you remember where you were 10 years ago? Do you remember where you were five years ago? One of the craziest things I think of when it comes to time, do you want to be in that exact same position in five years? Think of where you are right now. In five years, do you want to be right there? Do you want to be sitting uncomfortably exactly where you are? In 10 years, still want to be broke? Still want to be in debt? Still want to have no money saved? Still want to have no cushion? Still want to have no prospects of being able or close to retiring? I have a lot of friends, a couple of friends, who are actually like pretty good when it comes to money. Very few friends. And what I found interesting was that even during 2020 and 2021, you know what took place, they actually lost their jobs. And me and them have almost never talked about investing or financing or you know, all these like money and things like that. And they had saved up so much money over the course of the last like couple of years before that. And even when they lost their job, they still had a good year and a half cushion for them to be able to find something else. And then they found other jobs. And it was like, that's where you're supposed to have. But the problem is you don't get the dopamine from that. You don't get the hype of going to the store to go buy something. How many, how many videos have you seen? Years ago, I used to collect, not collect, but also kind of like flip when I was doing eBay and stuff more. I used to see so many videos of these celebrities going to buy like sneakers and Yeezys and all these other things, but it was never from the, from the perspective of you as a person should use this as your side hustle, so go and make enough money to be able to save and put into something else. It was simply buy all these things, accumulate these things. Why don't you have these things? And they would, they, they, they would stand there with their pretty girlfriend. You would get the perception that you need to simply buy all these things forever and never liquidate them because why would you liquidate them? You know, you have to show people that you have money because when you liquidate, you show people that you need the money. There's so many misconceptions and weird things that we have about money in our society and as far as what we're supposed to do and how we're supposed to be perceived and looked at by other people. It's a bit crazy. Tying directly into the last two as well, I would recommend quite heavily is to find, now here's the best part, find something that you like and find a way to make money from it. It's the idea of increasing your ability to earn something. Also goes back to the beginning of the video. If you have the time and if you have the energy. I know the world is nuts right now. If you are working two or three jobs, listen, I'm not telling you to, you, you got to hustle harder. You got to wake up at three in the morning. That's some of the most toxic stuff I've ever seen in my entire life. If you have extra time, even if something as simple as your, your ability to earn is those extra dollars, euros, yen, wherever you're living, that you can shave off from the stuff that you don't need every single month and put that into savings, put that into a savings account, put that into a high interest yield saving account. Many of them are now offering around 4%. And people will try and discourage you and tell you, well, that's not you know, the best way to make money. You have to diversify. I know that a lot of people are just into crypto, but crypto can't be the only thing that you have. 
If you are able to every single month to put 50, 100, 200, and if you are, you know, good to put more money than that into the stock market, into dividend stocks, because you can also roll over your dividend. That is to say, if you hold a stock, sometimes they'll offer a two, three, four percent dividend for holding a single stock. And every three months or four months, that company will give you money for simply holding that stock. You can tell your broker on one of the online brokerage firms that you want to roll it over. So whatever money that you get at the end of that quarter, or whatever the time frame is, you roll it back over. This is also how wealth is created by, 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 by wealthy people. Because they know that there's a difference between wanting to do everything in your 20s and being able to do everything in your late 30s, early 40s, mid 40s, or even early 50s. To be able to go, well, I've been investing in dividend stocks. I've been investing in this thing that pays out money quarterly, monthly to me. And I've looped it around so many times that I've made enough money that now that I actually can retire or I can simply downsize. You, you, I hope you've seen these videos where these people are like, yeah, here we go. I was living in a two bedroom house. I downsized to a studio and they're like, I'm happy because I know that I never have to work for anyone ever again. And then they, they usually even turn that into something that changed their life. They become YouTubers. They start working on TikTok or other places where they can find like a stream of income to tell other people exactly how they did it as well. If you can find something else that increases your earning power or the amount of money that you're making and it, as a side hustle, it doesn't have to be anything crazy. Your side hustle doesn't have to bring in an extra 5000 per month. I'm so tired of seeing these videos with these thumbnails. $35,000 a month. It's not believable. It's not happening. How many other friends, I'm sorry for screaming. How many other friends do you have are bringing in 35,000 extra per month, an extra 5,000 per month? Everybody would be doing it. If you happen to find a way to do it, bless you. If you don't and you're only able to bring in an extra 50, 100, 200 for the entire month, you, you, you work one, two, three, four, five hours over the course of whatever amount of time you make that money, it will go a long way for you. I promise, but you have to start putting money away now. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm actually quite flustered with this video. I, I, I wasn't expecting it to, uh, I think, be this intense. We've had this conversation before, but I, I think it's now getting more to like a breaking point. I think even for society, especially when we see or I see, if you're paying attention to the amount of automation and stuff that's going on. We have shifted into this very intense new world that I think a lot of people aren't paying attention to. I mentioned this years ago in other videos as well when it comes to automation. Before the idea of AI as it is now was even really a thing, the idea of self-driving cars and trucks and taxis and supermarkets, you must be seeing them. They all have uh, huge amounts of self-checkout. The actual uh, standing in line area is a lot smaller. And a lot of companies, they're planning by 2030 and 2035 to have fully automated uh, fast food chains, supermarkets, and so many other things. We're getting to this world where you have to, and this is why I also think crypto is very important, not for the money-making aspect per se, but it's the way that a lot of people have gotten into finance and have actually learned how to save. Because sometimes the stock market was a bit too abstract for a lot of people. So a lot of people made their first couple thousand from the cryptocurrency market. The issue is, is that you also, when you're in the market, you have to also learn when to take some of that money out and actually put it into something else to be able to diversify. But that's going to be another topic altogether. I... I wish I could say a lot more. I'm trying not to make this the longest video in YouTube's history, but it's just more of a, it's time, it's, 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 it's time to get things together. It's time to really, <laughs> I almost said the term straighten up. And then I realized that my back like was complete. I was like kind of hunched over like this funny in my mind. Um, it's time to get it together. It's time to really like focus on stuff. You know what your capabilities are. You know how much extra that you're spending Every single month, you know what can be cut. You know where and why you're doing certain things to try and impress other people. If you have friends who won't be your friend because they think that you're broke or you don't have it or you're not as cool and as 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 big spender as you were before, I got a <laughs> got a little hint for you. These people aren't actually your friends, and they were never your friends. The easiest way to 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 to, to figure this out is to tell these people who you hang out with all the time 
Tell them that you're broke. Even if you're not broke, send them text messages. I can't hang out this weekend. I'm broke. Nope. Sorry, I don't got the money. Uh, yeah, I was going to pick you up, but I don't have any gas money. I'm sorry. I can't do it. I'm broke. If they reciprocate, these are friends. Ah, uh, cool. It's no problem. Okay, see you. See you later. Mind if I come over? We can hang out at your place. That's a friend. If you if you see the two blue check marks, and it's red and they don't respond, you I'm I'm saving you thirty years of hanging out with people who you should not be hanging out with in the first place. You don't have to pretend for anyone. You literally don't. This is going to be your only life. You have to make sure that it works out the way that you want it to. And I'm certain it's not in debt. I'm certain it's not with you being 65, being like, well, got to gotta go continue to work. Got to go work to my uh, you know, robot coworkers as I'm uh, uh, cleaning windows. I'm sure we're going to have robots that can do that by then as well. But um, yes, there are a lot of different things that you can do. This is, of course, not everything. It's more of a... Uh, some of the problems that I've noticed that people have the most, it's the pretending to have it when you don't. It's the not getting your finances like simply in order. I made other videos before where I was telling people, I was like, have a savings account. <laughs> it's not, you would assume it's not that difficult. But then I hear people saying and I'm reading, well, I can't do it. I can't make a savings account because I have too many expenses. There's a video if you can. F no, no, no. It was definitely on on some like... um. Uh, social media platform where this woman, last thought, this woman was showing uh, the idea of keeping up with the Joneses with one of her clients. And this couple, they were, they, you, one of you must have seen it. It was a couple, they were bringing in 3.2 million per year. It was a couple, they have two kids. And after taxes and after other expenses, they had around 77,000 uh, per month. Right. If you if you did the quick math, right. Uh, their mortgage was twenty nine thousand per month. They had uh, it was four thousand a month for eating out. It was four thousand a month for massages. It was like eight thousand a month. Oh gosh, what were all these things? By the end of each month. They had $2,200 left. They're so concerned with trying to show other people that they have it. They literally have nothing. Can you imagine you? You make $3.2 million a year and at the end of every month, you only have $2,000. There's a video that I saw um, of this guy who used to live in the Hamptons. It, 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 it was one of those kind of like, uh, will people be ever able to retire kind of videos? This guy was like 50 something, maybe 56, 57, 58, somewhere around there. He didn't look that old, but he was. He, he said he was somewhere up there. And they were asking him how he got into that situation. He was, he was um, without home, living in Manhattan. And they asked him how he got into that situation. He said he was making millions every single year. Every single year he was making millions. He had a job for around 15 years at this high, high you know, super crazy, amazing company. And then at some point he lost his job. And then his wife left and she took the kids. And then he checked his, his finances, his, his, his monies, and he had nothing. He had nothing. He had absolutely nothing. He had zero. He had nothing. After making, and even if you drag it on back, this man said he made millions per year. Even if you smashed it down to just one million per year, that's $15 million. You want to give him a good 50% tax rate? That's $7.5 million. Can you imagine having zero after all of that? The devastation that would wash over you knowing that you made $15 million and have Jack Diddley squat to show for it because you're so concerned with thinking that your current state is going to be your state forever. You're making good money. Well, of course, you're going to be making good money in 10 to 15 years. Nothing's ever gone wrong with an economy or a company. Nothing's ever crashed before. People have never had to start over. I'm telling you, Especially, 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 especially if you're in the cryptocurrency market, we're gonna have we're going to have another conversation about this because you gotta get it together.
Because the way that the world is structured right now, nothing is safe. There's, there's nothing completely concrete and sure as heck. With you working a job for some company, you have you seen all the layoffs? That's not to scare you. It's just more of a, these things happen. So you have to start saving money. You, and, and, I, and I implore you as well, if you are able to find another source of income, like something that, that matters to you. I'm not going to tell you to do drop shipping. I'm not going to tell you to become a YouTuber. Find something that speaks to you that you actually end up enjoying that will help you make an extra couple hundred dollars every single month. And I'm not, ta- once again, I'm not talking about another 40 hour work week. Something that you can do for an extra two, three hours every single month when you have the time per month that makes you some extra money that you can put away somewhere so that you can invest, begin to accrue interest, start saving extra money. The money begins to pile up. And at some point you look and you've saved $17,000 that is making you dividends that continues to roll over as you put more money into it so that you have something for the future. It's a very exhausting idea because... You, you see it. I know you see it. I, I know that you're alive. Like I know that you are walking through this earth and you're understanding exactly what I'm talking about. But sometimes it's very difficult to make that leap because once again, we've been put into the situation where we're told that, that it's, it's, it's not how it works. You are never, ever told that you can just be okay. Think of a documentary. Think of a YouTuber. Think of someone else. You are never told it's okay to live on a basic level. You are either told, well, you're poor and therefore you're not worth it, or man, you got to make eight million bajillion dollars or what are you doing? Like that guy on on TikTok a couple of months ago, he was like, yeah, when I was younger, I was like, you know, 20,000 is a lot. But now that I'm like older, I'm like, 20K is not a lot at all, bro. Like you got to be, you got to step it up and make 40, 50,000. That's nonsense. These people are lying to you. These people are usually also not all there in the head. It's okay for you to like be normal. You don't have to show everyone else that you have diamonds and jewels and rubies and and brand new things all the time. Sit down and have a conversation with yourself and look around your house. I mean, you can start selling stuff on eBay. Look, because believe me, I'm sure more than a few people, you got a lot of stuff in your house that you shouldn't have bought. You didn't want. You used two or three times. Cameras. Games. That computer that you used two or three times. Right. Uh, bit of a ranty video. Hope I helped someone. Um, I hope you all enjoyed. Hope you all are having... <laughs> I can see myself in the camera over here. Sometimes some of the faces I make are just fantastic. I do hope that you've all enjoyed. I do sincerely hope that you all are having a great day. Morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be, I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Get your finances in order. Don't get into debt. If you are in debt, work it down now. It is your it's going to be the greatest thing to ever happen to you. You can avoid getting into debt. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. Start saving money. Start saving something. Find ways that you want to invest. Don't, I won't say don't. Don't be one of these people who tries to start a catering company or tries to start some other stuff that you know nothing about. If you want to start a catering company, if you want to start a business, if you want to open up a a store, if you want to make a cupcake business, please learn how to do it before. You know, the the um, the rate of failed businesses is something like 80 to 90 percent because people have an idea and then they go to start a business and then it fails and they go, why, why, why did it fail? Because it takes years of, of, of practice and things to be able to run a business and manage it and also hire people and know the tax situation and all the other rules and codes and other things like that. Yeah. Thank you all once again for watching and or listening. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.